So this is an update to my Bifrost Editor Plus script, which adds support for Bifrost 2.6, but also adds a new manipulator system for controlling compounds through the viewport. So this is an example of my cut mesh node, and you can see here when I select the compound that it creates an object in the viewport that I can move around and rotate to control the cutting plane of this compound. And there's no connections to the graph, and as soon as I deselect the node, uh, the, the object's gone. So these are meant to just be temporary objects that I can move with you know, the standard transform tools uh, to set attributes on a compound. Here's another example, in this case with an existing graph. And here I can create a manipulator node, which now comes with the library that comes with this script. And it basically just acts as a pass through for the manipulator's transform, as well as controls for its styling and drawing. So I can just plug this in and then use it to transform this cube, as well as control how it looks, uh, the color, the shape, if it's x-rayed, things like that. So the way the system works is first by adding certain metadata to the compound. This would contain things like which parameters it controls, as well as the styling options. It's also possible to do multiple manipulators, as well as organizing them into hierarchies. Then once the compound's selected, this metadata gets picked up and is used to create the manipulator. So adding metadata is done through the script editor. And for kind of a starting off point in the BEP menu, there's a print example. And this just prints a pretty elaborate example for a mesh torus. Um, this kind of, it contains all the options as well as uh, comment on what they do. Normally they won't, uh, adding manipulator doesn't require this much, but as I mentioned, this is a pretty elaborate example. So I'll go ahead and make this editable and then execute this. And this will add the metadata in order to create this manipulator, which has three parts, uh, one for moving it around, and then two of these arrows for controlling the two types of radius. So then if I were to publish this compound, all instances would then have this manipulator. Lastly, I'd like to just highlight some of the options in this manipulator submenu. So native manipulator nodes, this will actually add metadata to a variety of existing Bifrost nodes where a manipulator might be relevant. So uh, the torus will get the one like in the example I showed, cube gets this kind of arrow, which I can use to transform it around, transform points, basically a whole bunch of others that uh, just have transform related attributes on them. Next, there's a section for graph shape uh, selectable. So it's set to auto disable by default, which means when a manipulator is present, I can't accidentally um, select the graph shape in the viewport. Um, so it kind of be, can be useful for like things like box selecting, and I don't actually have to worry about you know grabbing the Bifrost graph itself. Lastly is the creation mode. So this whole time it's been set to selected, which basically just means if I select the compound, it will create the manipulator at that time. Um, but I can also set this to compound, which will do it for whenever I change compounds. So if I just go inside of a different one and then return, now it's gonna create all those, com uh, all those manipulators at once. And so that can be nice if, you know, if I have a bunch of different objects and I don't wanna have to keep switching between you know, what I've selected in the graph, um, just everything's present the whole time. And as soon as I leave this and I go somewhere else, it will clear those out. Then there's also the option to just completely disable the entire manipulator system.